I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Got a space, man, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Well, 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 everyone, uh, this is Jonathan. Uh, you're watching, uh, once again, the Wrestle Rock Podcast. Uh, I am with my partner, Benoit, a.k.a. Nostradamus. Ben, how are you doing, my friend, today? Uh, fine. Uh, I'm very proud to be there today because uh, yes, this, is, this is our first WWE Hall of Famer. Yeah, and... Uh, One half of Harlem Beat. Yes, and he's a former WCW talent, former uh, ECW talent. Uh, also, uh, NWA talent. Uh, NWO. N NWO. 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 The stable yes, NWO. Exactly. He is a former 10 time uh, tag team champion with uh, his father. Uh, his brother. His uh, brother. Oh, sorry. Your, uh, your brother, uh, Booker T. Ladies and gentlemen, we introduce uh, yourself, uh, Mr. Stevie Ray. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm fine, guys. I'm fine. Thank you very and much. Thank you so much for being here. Honestly, this is an honor and privilege. And you know that you are very busy with a lot of things. And just take uh, 15 minutes with us. Uh, this is an honor. Thank you so much uh, for your time. So It will uh, be huge. Yeah, 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 <laughs> honestly. And uh, we go forward with uh, some questions. So uh, we know uh, that you were born in uh, New York City. Uh, how was your childhood I'm sorry. Well, uh, you say how was my childhood? Yeah. Um, I I pretty much had a regular childhood, like most kids. You know, nothing special about it. But uh, from what I can remember, <laughs> it's long yeah. it's long time ago. If you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember, but you know, regular childhood. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So uh, go ahead, my okay, friend, uh, Mister Hoffman. Now, how did now, you get? Now, who is this, Benoit? Yes, yeah, uh, just only Ben. Just yes, only yeah, yeah. Um, Ben. Uh, you are. Uh, let me ask you guys something, man. You guys are in Quebec City, Canada. Yeah, yes. of course. And we and, are, and, and you got you guys are French Canadian. Yeah. Oh, exactly, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And, exactly sir. Yes. So uh, you got you guys second language is English, right? Yeah. yeah exactly. We have a French accent. Yes. Uh, bonjour. Yeah. Comment vas-tu? So let me ask you guys something. Now, you're doing a podcast with me, Stevie Ray, today, and you guys are speaking English. Now, do you guys do your podcast and speak French? Sure. Why not? No, I'm just asking. Do you have French guests? Uh, we will. Yes, we yeah. have. Uh, we have some uh, French guests. The Rougeau brothers. Uh, yes, we have. The Rougeau, uh, they're not French. Yes, he is a French Canadian from yeah, Quebec. He, he from he Quebec. Roop, they act French, but they're not French. Don't can't you hear their accents? Ah, uh, you have a big accent. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They speak fluent, perfect English. Yeah, he he, he speak uh, not bad, honestly, and uh, and mostly uh, Ray Rougeau uh, have been involved in uh, WWE uh, during uh, seventeen uh, years as a WWF commentator. And, uh, oh wrestling. yeah, that's that's right. He does the he does the French broadcasting, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think they learn. I think they learn French from uh, some French schools teacher. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, if you want, si vous voulez, we can talk. Uh, nous pouvons parler uh, in French en français. A little no, bit. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to talk in French. I want you to talk. In <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I don't want you to talk in French. You know, a good friend of mine was a real French Canadian, not like the Rousseaus. A good friend of mine. You know what his name is? Uh, no. Rich Martel. Rick Martel. Oh yeah, Rick yeah, Martel. Yeah. Is, yeah, he is the one of the best uh, wrestler in, uh, in Canada. In Canada, and the guy live uh, near to my uh, to my house. And uh, oh, really? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's he doing? What's he doing? I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, we don't know what happened with uh, Mr. Martel because uh, he he probably take the decision to just uh, retire retire for good. Yes, and uh, well, I know he retired, but what is he doing in his retirement? Oh, that that's a good question because uh, we don't know. Honestly, he's not he's not helping the kids or anything, and the, the French kid. The French Canadian kids, he's not out there in the community yeah, uplifting yeah. the little French Canadian kids like like Stevie Ray does here in Houston, Texas. Uh in Houston, Texas, uh we know uh uh um I can the blue one de Austin, Texas. Uh, uh, Duke the Dumpster Rosie. Duke the Dumpster Rosie is from Tennessee. Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson is from uh, Houston, Houston, Texas. We live in Houston. Yes. Who? Uh, Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson. Uh, Tony Norris. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he lives here. Of, uh, of your friend, um, uh, that was uh, a couple uh, years ago. Well, uh, you, you, inter- you guys interviewed him. Yeah, we interviewed him uh, uh, last June. Yes, um, at late of June, if my uh, memory is June third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, between you and me, um, I believe that he has not necessarily a good LT uh, when we are talking all together. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. He is in a bad situation, uh, I think so. But he's a smart guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, cool guy. Yes, he's a very cool guy, but uh, not a good LT for the moment. So that's so bad for for him. I, I, I actually don't understand what you're saying. When you say you say he's in a bad way or something, did you say um, that? Um. What's that mean? Um. In fact, health, uh, health, the, health wise or something like that. Health wise. The health wise, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Probably. Uh, health problems so uh mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't uh, look uh, like uh, a guy in shape yeah exactly oh, okay okay <laughs> but anyway you guys i you know when when people interview me i really don't like doing interviews this early in the day because I, i'm super busy but mm-hmm. i took i took time out today for you guys um usually i do interviews later in the day you know like Like I told you guys, like seven ish, eight ish, stuff like that. But um, I, um, I'm making that time for you today. So you, whatever questions you guys got, let's let's get with it because I'm I'm live streaming on uh, YouTube right now. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, well, what? not YouTube. I don't have my YouTube thing on. I don't think. I think I just got a Facebook on. So to let you know, my fans see see me do things like this sometimes as you can see i'm in my studio also this is why i thought this is why i podcast from so and you have a podcast what is the name of your podcast um see can you see that sign behind me no no i don't see see that no 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 i can't see that sorry okay you don't see that i I see it perfectly it's called straight shooting with stevie ray okay 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 nice 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 Uh, can we go ahead with uh, yeah, something? let's go. Okay, perfect. So okay, go ahead, my friend. okay. Uh, <laughs> how did you get interested in wrestling, uh, Mr. Hoffman? How did I get it? Oh, well, kind of like a wing and a prayer. Kind of uh, met a guy in the gym, said he's opening up a wrestling school, and you know, we interested in going, and you know, so we was interested in going, and next thing you know, we end up going to a wrestling school for like three months and that okay. was it next and uh and we started wrestling that was pretty much about it it's not a it's not a story that you know you really behold it's just one of those things you're trying out something you never knew it was going to go anywhere i just want to try wrestling out just to see if i can do it because i'm just an inquisitive person other than that you know i was just having fun but that's what happened And after your uh, your training, uh, how did you get recruited by uh, WCW with your brother? Well, actually, we were already wrestling in 
organization called Global Wrestling up in Dallas, Texas. Okay. And they they and we used to come on ESPN every afternoon, and okay. we got kind of popular on that show, and that's where it came from. That's where us being discoverers came from. So. And um, we would like uh, to know if your uh, Stevie Ray name, uh, wrestling name, uh, has been inspired by the bluesman, guitarist, and singer Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yes or one, no? One of, one of my good friends, Ricky Santana, I see I see him right now on uh, social media. Okay. And he said, <laughs> he's not lying about this, though. <laughs> I, I really don't talk about the comments when I'm going live on that, but this is different. He says him and his him and his partner, uh, Cuban assassin, gave me and my brother on the job training. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's not lying, man. Uh, he's not lying about that. I, I don't want to put that. I've never put it out there to the public, you know. Yeah. Other than other than the fact when we was in the uh, college getting inducted into the uh, cauliflower, uh, yeah, so, cauliflower. So, 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 yeah, a few years ago. Okay. And those guys were there. And we was, and my brother looked at him. And we was like, uh, oh my God, it's Ricky and Q, man. We had so many matches with those guys that they were training us. <laughs> <laughs> they were training, they were training us on a <laughs> nightly basis. You know what I'm saying? We didn't even realize it, you know. But God, we had, and they were like different gimmicks all the time. They would change the gimmicks up all the time to be these guys, to be these guys. The next thing you know, man, you know, it's like uh, that, that's a true story, man. I didn't know he was going to put it out there to the public, man. Thanks, and Ricky. And Thanks and for all, letting the whole world know, bro. And but, about but, but, funny uh, stuff, uh, we, we would like to talk about uh, the the story behind the Shock Master. <laughs> so uh, oh. <laughs> you were there. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Therefore, the Shock Master. And, and well, yeah. what, what, what was your reaction? After Shockmaster entrance, fuck I'm gonna be honest. I, I told this story on my old podcast, and that's how it got out there in the wind, and a lot of people saw it. I'm not one of those guys that really like to talk about things that happen in the wrestling business, like guys do to shoot interviews and let the whole world knows about what goes on in the wrestling business and things that have happened, so on and so forth. I'm not one of those guys. Uh, but when we were doing the old podcast, Stand Up for Greatness, uh, me and my partner, uh, Brad Patowski, we were talking about certain WCW pay-per-views and certain WCW things that had happened. Mm -hmm. And that story just popped in my head. I've never talked about that story with anyone before other than my brother, because we were the only two there that saw the whole thing go down. Now, we could have went to the other guys and go, hey, man, this happened, that happened, the night of the incident. But we didn't do that. We just, it was just kind of like something funny within, between him and myself. So <laughs> we would talk about it sometime, you know, or we'll make a joke, you know, like if my brother pissed me off or something like that. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to do you, uh, you know, we're in the car riding to a town or something. I go, hey, man, I'm going to do you like uh, uh, John, uh, John Tunter was going to do uh, on Anderson that night, if you don't get out of my face, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. And we'll laugh about it, you know, and kill the tension. But we, I don't know about my brother, I can't speak for him, but I've never discussed that incident with anybody until a few years ago, ever. <laughs> ever. And so when I told the story on my old podcast and stuff, I, it was a serious incident at the time, very serious. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't tell the story in a serious way because John Tenton was a very good friend of mine, and so is Arn <laughs> Anderson. Arn Anderson, a real good friend of mine. So I had to put it in, uh, you know, like the African American barbecue. I had to put it in that way, where you tell stories and make it fun. So that's how I got out there, and that was a true. That's a true. I know it's funny the way I told it, but that's a true story, word for word. John Tenta wanted to kill Arn Anderson one night at Club La Vila in Florida. And we dressing rooms were the little uh, RVs that we dress in. And it was the craziest thing I had ever, up until that point, it was the craziest thing I had ever witnessed in my life. I've never seen a man that mad before. He almost tore the, he almost tore the little RV up, except for the little apartment my brother was 
standing in and we didn't want to get caught in the carnage. So it was a crazy situation, man. Uh, I imagine. It was a crazy situation. And I just talked to Arn about it last year for the first time. I've never even discussed it with Arn. I talked with him about it. And he said he, he didn't, all these years, he didn't know. I used on someone else's podcast. He was saying all these years, he didn't know all of that took place. I assumed, me and my brother assumed he did. But, but you know, it's one of those deals, man. But I'm glad everybody got a kick out of it because, you know, God rest his soul, John Tenter. He, he was a good dude, man. He was a good dude. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, my friend. Okay. What are some teams you prefer to compete uh, with uh, as Harn as Heat? Sorry. What was that again? What are some teams you prefer to compete with? with? What are some things I prefer to compete with? Yeah, in WCW, yeah. of course. Uh, maybe, maybe you should say that in uh, French, man, because I didn't get it. I didn't get the English version. <laughs> 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 what are some things? Oh, okay, say it again. What are some some teams you prefer to compete with? You mean people? No, uh, a tag team, a, a tag, tag team in team, WCW. Yes. Oh, what are some of the tag teams that I like to yeah, exactly. yeah, of work with? Oh, okay, okay. Oh my God, the list is endless, man. We we love working with everybody. Just like I was just talking about Ricky Santana and Q. We would love working with those guys, man. I think we love working with them guys more than anybody. A lot of people, we've never told anybody that though, because they wouldn't giving those guys a push. But if when you come, you know, but from a personal standpoint, we had so much fun, man. And a lot of people don't realize how fun professional wrestling can be when things gel, when things really come together and you, and, and you make it, they make it easy. You know, you, you can just flow with the person, like dancing with a person or something like that. But uh, we had so much fun with those guys, but most people don't remember that. But, you know, the Nasty Boys, the Steiner Brothers, Sting and Lex Luger, mm -hmm. uh, Rick, ooh, I mean, oh, my God, Bunkhouse Buck, Dick Slater, uh, you know, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall. Oh, my God, bro, we had You many. wrestled with the best, man. You, I mean, you just, I'm, I'm just saying, right we had, we had so right many good times working with top people. Yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was really cool, you know. But you know, it was what it was. And you know. um, as we, uh, at, when we uh, we watched your uh, wrestling match, we uh -huh. uh, we saw uh, uh, two large scars on uh, each shoulders. You have uh, why you have that? Have I'm you sorry. What, what what was that again? You have you have two large scars on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, uh, what is the the the, the, the uh, Can you explain why you have oh, this? Oh, oh, uh, one from a motorcycle accident. Okay. One from just getting into fights with people. Okay, I was just curious because yeah. uh, every time. Uh, I see this and, uh, you know, <laughs> right. yes. And um, during your all career, um, you, uh, you involve uh, one manager uh, with, uh, with Harlem Heat. So can you speak to us about uh, your friendship with uh, Miss uh, Sherry Martell? Oh man, that was, that kind of, that thing with Sherry Martell kind of came out of nowhere, you know, um, we were, getting ready to get a push in WCW. And like like most uh, wrestling organizations, I guess they feel as though African-Americans can't speak for themselves. Of which, you know, a lot of people don't know. I actually went to school. You know, I was going into radio and things of that nature. So yeah, I can speak for myself. I mean, I think my vernacular is very broad. But you know, uh, when you got certain people that's not of your ethnicity and it's not of your culture, they see things in a wrestling perspective as it pertains to the African-American individual. So they were looking for certain people to come out and be our manager. They didn't know me and my brother did not want a manager at all. And me and my brother was going round and round trying to figure out how to tell them, we don't want a manager. We don't need a manager. 
and by the mere fact that you know certain people thinking it's for wrestling only as they see uh african-american professional wrestlers not pro african-american people but professional wrestlers and that's all they know because of the broad spectrum on the whole dynamic but be that as it may um i think sherry was doing something with randy and and hulk and all of a sudden i guess that ended because you know really truly we when you're wrestling, you don't really pay attention to what's going on with other people and their angles and stuff like that. And we seen her at a, a TV taping one day. And like we always do, we always spoke to her, so on and so forth. And then she mentioned, hey, I heard you guys were looking for a manager. And uh, we were like telling her, nah, yeah, they're trying to give us a manager. But we went in the studio with a few people. And, you know, back in those days, everybody trying to help their buddies out and shit like that and keep them on the payroll. You know, WCW, typical. And, uh... It uh, and she was like, uh, we were telling her, now nah, we don't want a manager, you know, we just gotta figure, try to figure out a way to tell them that we we don't agree with it. And she was like, well, what if I was your manager? What if I was your manager? You know, like that. And we were like, thought, are you kidding? And she was like, yeah. If what if I was your guys' manager? And me and my brother just like lit up, like you know, light poles, like that would be so cool. <laughs> you know, and uh, she was like, well, hey, man, drop my name then when you guys talk to him. And uh, we dropped her name. I can't remember who we talked to. And that's how the whole thing okay. came about. Next thing you know, we was doing the angle with Sherry as our secret magic. We were saying, hey, we got somebody that's coming in, but that we never would say on the show. And uh, then finally, I think it was night we were working with the Nasty Boys. Sherry came out of we would have a phone like we're talking to, like, yeah, we just finished the job, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, but everybody was saying, who's that on the phone? You know, the announcers, who they're talking to on the phone. And finally the night she showed up and it's like, oh, my, it's Sherry Montel, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, <laughs> that's the, the secret. The secret was out and the rest is history, man. God and rest, God really rest her soul, man, because honestly. we had so much fun together. Yeah, that's a perfect fit. And uh, between you and me, uh, when uh, Sherry Martel uh, touch uh, wrestling talent, mm -hmm. uh, she, I don't know why, but she ha she has a magic touch, and uh, <laughs> sky is the limit with uh, with a uh, wrestling talents. Right. Uh, as, uh, yeah. As people, for example, and uh, Sherry, Sherry was the real deal. You dig what yeah. I'm saying? She, she has a good was the yeah. real female deal you know yeah. so it wasn't it was all you know heart knocks and misery yeah and when she matched up with us very very well because of her intensity no other female wrestler no other female in the business ever would have been able to keep up or justify their intensity mm -hmm. with what we were looking for. Because once we got together, we laid the whole thing out, how we wanted her to talk, how we wanted her to represent us, you know, how we wanted her whole persona to be, because we didn't want someone there to just be there or just be on the payroll. You know, mm -hmm. you are, you're, not, you're not a manager, you are part of the team. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? This is not a two-man team. This is a three-person team. You don't fight one. You fight the whole game. Yes. And everybody knew. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knew that. Yeah. So it was like, uh, we. I mean, I look back on it now, and I it brings a smile to my face because some of the stuff that a lot of people didn't get to see was in the house shows where there was no cameras around. <laughs> and that's when Sherry could really spread. Oh my God, we had so much fun. Good <laughs> Lord, have mercy, Jesus Christ, man. I mean, just oh my God, I look back. I'm thinking about it now. I'm getting goosebumps, man. I'm thinking about it, but we had so much fun, man. And uh, yeah, yes. yeah, man. I miss, I miss her, man. I really do. <clears throat> okay, so uh, you won uh, ten times uh, WCW Tag Team Championship belts with your uh, brother Brooker. Mm -hmm. Have you enjoyed your first win as well as your last? Yeah, I can't even remember. 
<laughs> I can't even remember them, man. You know, I'll be honest. People ask me that. People have asked me that question. It's been a long time. Yeah, and you. No, I'm just saying through the years, I never, I never. Uh, I'm just not one of those people that like to, that's been able to reminisce about certain things and remember certain things as it pertains to the professional wrestling business. Mm. I don't even remember the first time we won the belts in WCW. I don't even remember. I remember some of the times we won after that. Uh, I don't, I, it might've been that time that Sherry came in with the nasty boss. I can't remember. And all the other ones after that, I can remember a couple of them, but I never really, I'm not going to say paid attention, but maybe I should have. Mm -hmm. My brother is more up on that kind of stuff than, than myself, because I remember one time he said, hey, man, do you know we didn't want the belts like uh, seven times or six times or something like that? We were talking and I had no clue. I was like, Really? He's like, yeah, and he started naming them all out. When we beat so-and-so that time, then when we beat so-and-so, and then we came back and beat And I'm like, okay. I, 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 I'm the kind of person that just went to work, you know? Yeah. Just like on, a tel like on a television show. I don't remember the episodes. <laughs> I, just know, I just know I go to work, and I, I, ra I do know I wrestle, <clears throat> and... When it's when the stuff is over, man, I'm shut down. I don't like to think about yesterday. And not in that not in that fact. I'm kind of like looking forward to tomorrow. And I'm still like that to this day. I was like that before I got into wrestling business. I'm like that after it. That's just the way I am. I don't know why. I always like thinking about unless somebody triggers something in my mind. Mm-hmm. Now, if you trigger something in my mind, we have a conversation. Like right now, we were talking about Sherry. All kind of stuff start to break, come in my head. But if you never mentioned her, I would never have thought about any of that because I'm not dwelling on the past. So it was an honor winning the belt that many times. I think I remember three of them, I think. But what I really can remember is the, when we were in Global, and I tell people this, I've talked about this on other podcasts, the night that we won the global tag team championship match. And I remember that as vividly as it was yesterday. Yeah. Now I know we won it three or four times in global, but I only remember the first one. Okay. <laughs> That's when I remember, okay, now, now you've accomplished something in professional wrestling. And I guess that's why it still dwells within me because it was very exciting and it was like, we can do this. We can do this. People like us. And I guess that's why I still remember that. Everything else, all the, everything after that, I don't remember. I'm sorry. That's, I'm sorry. I can't, that, I can't uh, talk about it more, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah. it's not in my head. That's the conversation you guys need to have with my brother. And what is your opinion? Uh, because uh, you are the main of WCW, and we would like to hear you about what is your opinion about uh, the WCW acquisition by the WWE? The 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 acquisition when yeah. WCW uh, shut down and w, WWE took it over yeah, in two thousand and one. Yeah. Yeah. What is my opinion of that? My yeah. opinion. Um, Uh, <laughs> my boy Andrew, what's up, Andrew? Uh, my opinion about that, I kind of knew it was coming before it happened. I knew, I always knew some WCW because I had a few friends that worked in the office and was give. You know, I could talk to them about certain. I'm not going to mention their names, but were talking to me about certain things that were going on behind the scenes. So I ha had a feeling for a couple of years that. The WCW thing was the train was going to run off the tracks. I had a, I had a feeling about it, and when I never thought it was going to end the way it ended, but it didn't surprise me at all. It didn't surprise me at all. 
So when it went down and they explained to everybody what was going to go down, I really felt slighted, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, <laughs> you've been an intricate part of a company since 1993. And now it's, now it's 2001. And you felt as though, you know, I'm the kind of person that came up playing sports and just having a sports mentality, you know, whether it was baseball, whether it was football, basketball, running track, I did all the, I did those things all my all my life. And it was like when you're on a team sport, man, everybody does their part to make the team go. It's about the team. And I felt like you know, we've been an intricate part of, you know, just bringing tag team wrestling back to the forefront somewhat. And that made me feel proud. And now it's going to end like this. And I was like, I don't want to be a part of, I don't want to be a part of everybody capitulating. I don't want to be a part of a capitulation like this where I'm made to look like a fucking punk. Because I'm going to tell you, ain't no punk in me. Ain't no bitch in me. And when they sent me the ticket to go to that last show where Shane McMahon was going to come out and, and me and my brother talked and he was like, well, you know, they're going to be evaluating talent and all that shit. I said, I'm not going. I'm not going. I don't even want to be a part of it. And he was like, why, man? You know, they're going to be. I said, brother, I'm tired of this. Go down there. Do your thing. Because I'm like, I, I can't be a part of that. I just don't want to be a part of it. And, and that's when I took my plane ticket. I went down to the Continental Airlines uh, office, which was right down the road from where I stayed at the time. And I turned that ticket into two tickets. And the girl I was dating at the time, I called her up and say, hey, I'm, a, uh, I'm going to Vegas next weekend. Can you meet me in Vegas? And me and a buddy of mine, I gave him the other hat of the ticket, and I met a friend of mine that I was dating from Arizona to meet me in Vegas to go watch the uh, uh, fights, the heavyweight fight between uh, Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis. Okay, okay. So that's what I did that weekend. I had a ball in Vegas watching the heavyweight fight between Evander Holyfield, and I didn't want to think about wrestling. I didn't want to think about what was going on on Monday night. I didn't want to think about any of that. And wow. that's what I did. <laughs> okay. So that's what I thought about it. So when people ask me, hey, man, why you never went to WWE with your brother because I knew they were going to turn us into pussies. <laughs> I didn't want to get turned into a pussy. No disrespect to them. Going back to what I was talking about earlier, that is just how the wrestling vision of someone that's not from your culture sees you. Mm -hmm. And that's not a slide on them. It's just the way it is when you come up looking at things from a professional wrestling point of view, how it pertains to the African-American wrestler. That's all. Some people, that's all they know. Yeah. So when you put things in that context, I didn't want to be a fucking part of that. Sorry about my language, but I'm just saying I'm passionate about that. I didn't want to be uh, running from, uh, like when they had my brother running from Steve Austin in a grocery store. Do you really think I'm going to run from any punk ass, bad knee, Daisy Duke wearing pussy in a grocery store? It ain't no man. I ain't never been scared of no man in my life. I got two older brothers that used to beat my ass from the time I was five years old. <laughs> now, let me get in a fight with somebody my age while I'm in school. Yeah. It ain't, no, it ain't, I, I no. So I'm just saying, all the, all the stuff that my brothers used to take out on me, I would take out on people when I went to school. Why? I don't know. Because I was frustrated when you get your ass beat up and you got no chance, you know, against somebody that's bigger than you. 
older than you, but that's, I'm not saying there was, you know, there was malicious or anything like that. That's just the way it is when you're a younger brother. You know, so then finally, my brother was born who was younger than me. So I'm like, okay, well, my, maybe get some of the heat off me now. You know what I'm saying? But no, they never did nothing to him because he was too young. You know, but that's just how it was. So I don't understand. I ain't, I ain't it. Harlem Heat was always built, and Stevie Ray, who we're talking about right now, myself, was always built as badasses. Well, my attitude is easy to do, bro. It's easy to do. I'm the guy that clubs in this town that I live in, Houston, Texas, would call to clean their clubs up. Like the movie that uh, Patrick Swayze did. <laughs> I'm that guy that people would call in this city. That's how I made my reputation in this city. Because wow. I knew my stuff, you know? I And when they made that movie, Roadhouse, I was like, damn, that's so my life. From Houston? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, that's my life, but it's <laughs> done a different kind of way. Even the car that he drove in that movie uh, was a mid 80s, a late 80s yeah. S S500. Do you know I still got a car like that that's in storage? <laughs> I still own that same car to this day that, is. that I keep in storage because it reminds, I don't want to, I, I should just sell it and get rid of it, but I, it reminds me of those days when I was a nobody. Hey, out here keeping things right for my money. That's how I make my money. And I took my job serious. So I don't know how to be a pussy. I just don't. And I knew, like they did with my brother, they take the badass aura off of him and then put something on him that they're comfortable with. If you see what I'm saying. So no, not, not that there's anything wrong with that in a certain way, but Frankly, I think in other ways, I'm not my brother, so it is what it is. But it worked out for him very good, very lucrative, and this, that, and the other. But I'm, I ain't, I'm not a prostitute. <laughs> I'm not a prostitute. I, you know, I don't give fellatio for money, bro. I'm not gonna do it. I've, you know, I've always been able to get by, so I'll get by. Okay, uh, just before WrestleMania 35, uh, three years ago, uh, how did you know you were going to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, and what was your reaction? You know, it was kind of like came out of nowhere because uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame because, I, you know what, people have asked me about that for years. Hey, Steve, you think uh, Hall of Me would ever be inducted into the Hall of Fame? And I'm like, I don't know. Um uh, <laughs> Because I never really think about things like that, you know. I'm not a big proponent of professional wrestling um, like I was when I wrestled or before I got into business. So things that fans think about, man, I ain't think about. It. I got a business to run, you know, and, you know, uh, you know, daughter to raise and things like that and got other responsibilities. So I'm not thinking about wrestling stuff, you know. And one day, I mean, people ask me that all the time. And I was just like, man, I don't know. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And they, one day I got a phone call. I was pissed off about something. Because, you know, I'm on a Legends contract with WWE. Mm -hmm. And my contract was getting ready to expire. And it was one day I was just pissed off about something. Don't ask me what. Sometimes I just get up pissed off. And I don't even know why. I might have had a bad dream about something I didn't want to think about. But anyway, the phone rang. I looked at the phone. And uh, it was Connecticut number. There was a guy, I won't mention his name, you know, that, you know, what I would talk to when I had to talk to WWE about my Legends contract, stuff like that. So I was like, I guess he's calling me to... Uh, tell me that they're not going to renew my contract, you know? So I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm going to take all my frustrations out on him today, mm -hmm. you know? And I picked up on, yeah, man, what's up? Hello, what's up? And he goes, uh, Stevie? I go, yeah, this is Stevie. Man, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay. Are you okay? He's like, look, he's like, man, I, I just wanted to call you to tell you you and your brother been inducted into the Hall of Fame, man. <laughs> <laughs> then I felt like a heel. 
I felt like they healed like I'm like, <laughs> I couldn't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because now I went from one emotion, you know what I'm saying, to a emotion all the way across the street, you know. Mm -hmm. And now I'm almost like, I'm not going to call it shock, but I don't know what, I couldn't say anything because I felt bad for how I answered the phone, for one thing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm feeling, you know, got this gratification and stuff like that of the message he just gave to me, the news he just gave to me. So I was perplexed, if you will. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't say nothing. Then he was like, hello, are you there? And I go, yeah, I'm here, man. He was like, well, man, I don't know what's going on, man, but I just want to call you and tell you that. Blah, blah. He said, I already talked to your brother, and uh, and uh, maybe you guys can talk, and you know, he, and we'll be getting back with you on the particulars and stuff like that. But you know, you can't let anybody know, so on and so forth. And I was like, okay, cool. So that's how the whole thing went down, man. Yeah, that's how the whole thing went down, and uh. And for ending, Mister yeah. uh, Ray, as usual, uh, my uh, partner Benoit. Uh, okay. Benoit, ben I thought that was a last name in French. Oh, my last name, La Ferrière. Yeah, I thought Benoit was a last name. How do you get a last name for a first name? This is the oh, yeah, my first this name is, is Benoit, my last name is La Ferrière. Oh, uh, no, <laughs> I said, how, Benoit is usually a last name for a Canadian. Uh, well, like Chris Benoit, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, like, like Chris Benoit, but. In oh, the, what about the Ben Water used to play basketball? <laughs> oh, no, I don't play basketball. <laughs> no, but his name was Ben Water. He played basketball. Okay, okay. In Canada. Oh, I don't know. And uh, my partner, Ben Water, a.k.a. Nostradamus Ben, but as usual, every time, um, <clears throat> the story behind the Nostradamus, he, he tried to predict the future and blah, blah, blah. Crystal blah, blah. ball. Yes. Oh. N Nostradamus. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, five hundred yeah, years ago. <laughs> that that's what they call me. <laughs> they call exactly. me the they call me the black Nostradamus. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, that's what they call me. Yeah, I predict okay. the future, man. <laughs> I tell the future before it happens. <laughs> I do. You're laughing, but I do. I tell people what's gonna happen before it happens, man. Yeah, and it's practically the same uh, situation with uh, with Benoit because when we're watching a wrestling event or a, a baseball uh, game, he can uh, predict practically the the right uh, person who wins or, uh, and stuff like that. So Sometimes I was wrong, but uh... <laughs> well, you can't get it right all the time. You know. Yes. So uh, go ahead, my friend. Oh yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for the interview. It was uh, very uh, appreciated. Appreciated. No problem. No problem. I predict to you, uh, Hilti, of course. Well, and, uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I predicted the same thing. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, maybe, maybe I, I said maybe uh, one last match as Harlem Heat uh, with uh, your brother Booker. Yes. Nah, I won't be doing uh, it. In the I won't be doing any more matches as Hall of Me. No? Oh, no. Okay. No. no. Man. Unless the money is right. <laughs> you dig? Oh, if the money right, you know, they might can lure me out. If the money's not right, let things let things be as they are. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Hoffman. This is an honor and privilege that you accept our uh, invitation and uh, this uh, fantastic uh, time with uh, 45 minutes. You are so generous with, uh, with us. This is an honor and privilege. So thank you so much. And okay. uh, have a great day, my friend. Goodbye, Mr. Okay, Hoffman. guys. Appreciate it, man. Take thank care. you. All Goodbye. right. Bye-bye.